What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in the video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel Extended ROM. So this is the 10th January 2023 build and the Pixel Extended version is 5.4 based on Android 13 of course and if you want to look at the change log, you can see the source change log right here. It's not much I would say. So it only comes with January security patch and stuff but I don't see a huge changes but some of you guys were actually willing to see a review of this Pixel Extended ROM so I thought why not let's just make this video quickly. And overall the usage experience is good enough but in my opinion you don't get a lot over here like if you're coming from Evolution X and stuff you are gonna miss a lot of things. Talking about the Android version you get this kind of looking animation looks beautiful. We have the Pixel Extended logo right on the top and we have the Android version as Android 13 Easter egg and they look beautiful as usual. We have these emojis appearing in the like Easter eggs. Let me go back we have the Extended version as 5.4. The maintainer is Ralph 979 of course and we have the security patch of latest January 5th 2023 and the stock kernel here is this 4.14 English OS kernel. The build number you can see from right here. Now in the system settings, we do get a system updater. You can check for updates if you want. And if you don't know how to flash this from, you can check out the flashing guide from the description. We have the pop-up camera settings and you can disable the sound effects for the pop-up camera if you want. There is not much like the gestures and stuff are not here, but they are in the customization settings, which is present inside this PE extensions. So I'll show you that later. But first, let me talk about the home screen. Well, all other ROMs are coming with some kind of modified pixel launcher or a launcher which supports double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen, but this does not. This still includes the old kind of pixel launcher. This ROM actually was coming with a modded kind of pixel launcher which used to have double tap to sleep, I guess, but this one simply does not anymore. And in the sessions, of course, you can disable it and even the overview sessions you can disable. But again, there is no option to actually double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. And of course, this is the pixel launcher present by default. But this is how the recent panel looks like. We get the screenshot, the select option, and we have the split top right there if you want to do that from the recent panel. And if you go all the way to the left, you can clear all the apps from here. But overall, don't get me wrong, the UI is very smooth, no issues. We have the Google's Discover page to the left, and it is very smooth experience. Swiping up on the home screen will get you to the app drawer, and you can search for any particular app that you are looking for. And if you swipe down, you will get the quick setting panel. It looks like this and even in the light theme the quick setting panel stays dark just like this and talking about the widgets yes there is that battery widget i have added it is working perfectly fine you can go into the like bluetooth battery settings or normal battery settings of the device from here and even the clock widget animation and stuff is working perfectly fine if you're looking at it and these are the stock apps present right out of the box over here and talking about the quick setting panel you can add or edit multiple toggles from here these are the toggles that you will get right out of the box and here let me show you we have the Wi-Fi, the mobile data and the Bluetooth toggle and stuff and if you tap and hold on it, it will open the Bluetooth settings directly and clicking on one toggle will actually toggle on or off the Bluetooth over here. So that is how it is. It doesn't open that small kind of pop up of the Bluetooth and stuff. But yes, it does show up the Bluetooth battery if you want to see that in the status bar too, it does show up. And we have the flashlight, the dark theme, auto rotate and the night light always on display kind of toggle and you can toggle it on or off there is no always on display for charging only we have the hotspot the screen recording is there we can record the device audio and microphone audio with this but there is no hevc processing for this you have the battery saver the do not disturb the google home controls nearby share and stuff and if you swipe to the right we have the one-handed mode the ambient display and the heads up and the airplane mode and here is how the power menu appears looks beautiful i would say and if you tap on restart, of course, as I have the advanced reboot enabled, I can directly reboot the recovery or fast boot from right here. Now in the settings panel, this is how it looks like again, going into the PX settings. Now, first of all, we get the status bar customization. Then we have the lock screen. Then we have the system and we have the hardware buttons. So these are the tabs looks beautiful. I would say the CY of the customization panel. We have the network traffic indicator. Then in the system icons, we have the headset, Bluetooth, headset recommended of toggles. Let me go back. We have the colored icons you can enable, then the 4G icon and the small mobile data icon. The double tap to sleep on the status bar or the lock screen is there. And we have the clock position changing option. You can change it right, left or center. And we have AM, PM style enabling option. You can change it small or normal font. And the battery styles there are not much, I would say. We get the icon portrait, circle and text. There is no big dotted circle or something. Or even the landscape right or left, those are simply missing. For battery percentage, we have this hidden inside or next to the icon. We have the brightness slider enabling option from the quick setting panel. And the position you can change to top or bottom. Then we have this show auto brightness button. And the brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar is present. We have the re-ticker option and we have the quick pull down. You can choose it from right or left or you can turn it off. Next, let's move on to the lock screen customization. Here we have the disable power menu on lock screen. Then we get the lock screen charging info, the double tap, 
and the pulse and the ripple effect also we have the udps customization and there are plethora of icons i have been using with the px kind of icon but if you want to go with other icons multiple options or plethora of options you can say for the fingerprint scanner icons now even for the animations if you enable it you will get this aurora bloom and stuff the cyberpunk 2077 mcladen and everything is there so you are getting plethora of options in terms of animation or the fingerprint scanner icons also we get this custom udfps icon and the screen of your body is enabled so you can enable or disable it if you want let's move on to the next one which is the power app volume control in the system and in the gestures you will get this quick tap or the back tap kind of actions and if you enable it the tap to screenshot and stuff is there and let me just do that and as you can see quick tap rejected as i tap the back side of the device so yeah you can reuse it if you want we have the quickly open camera let me go back we have the system navigation gestures in the settings of it we have the edge long swipe action and you can customize between these many options we have the gesture indicator swipe to invoke assistant also should work fine as you can see and if you scroll down more we have the edge touch area but there is no option to increase the size or the thickness of the pale bar and we have the haptic feedback and the full screen gestures let me go back we have the two button and three button navigation in the settings of it we have this hold for assistant if you want to use it then in the one handed mode of course you can use it for showing notification and stuff but i have this full screen into reach option so this is how it works let me go back we have the swipe break screenshot i have enabled it and this is how it works we have the share edit delete and the capture mode feature is available let me scroll down more we have the quick torch option you can use it if you want this is for the long press power button toggle torch let me go back we have this vibrate to indicate call series and talking about calling is vaulty calling and stuff should be working fine if you insert a vaulty sim card over here you should not worry about it and in the buttons in the hardware we have the system gestures again but if you scroll down more we have this wake device control playback and stuff all these click to take partial screenshot these kind of features and we have this fingerprint scanner and the fingerprint error vibration is present talking about the battery settings it does not provide any information i would say it doesn't show the battery temperature the charging cycle or the current or design battery capacity still does not show up so yeah very minimal i would say this battery settings battery life is good enough and you can get eight plus hours of screen on time if your battery's health is good actually but for me my battery health is good because i have replaced the battery so this is the original battery that's why i have been getting amazing battery life even the standby you can see is about eight days and shows this is estimated but yeah very good battery life that i'm getting overall i would say and in the health section it doesn't show up because i did not do a full charging cycle so if your battery's health is good you will get amazing battery life in my opinion and the fast charging and stuff is working perfectly fine you should not worry about it now in the sound and vibration this is how it looks like by the way the volume panel looks like this and you can expand or like switch the output device from it right here and if you want to expand this is how it, it expands and you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from right here and if in case you are playing music you can switch the app volume from right here and this is how the app volume icon will look so yeah very good volume panel in my opinion and we have this quick setting panel media kind of playback option and in terms of android 13 kind of experiences yes it has all of these like even in the lock screen you will get this ripple kind of seek bar looks beautiful i'll show you the thing which kind of speed clearly later on we have the live caption adaptive sound smart pause and we have the shortcut to prevent ringing then the dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound and vibration touch sound etc options in the wallpapers and styles we have this change wallpaper option and you are getting this pixel kind of wallpapers plethora of options i would say but i have been using a wallpaper wallpaper over here and the 16 colors for basic and the wallpaper colors are present the dark theme you can switch from right here and the themed icons you can switch on and we have up to 5 by 5 grid let me go back from here and in the security in the settings of it we do get the quick unlock the scramble pin layout and stuff all those things are present now let's just set up the face unlock quickly so setting up the face unlock is not a problem and if you go into the settings we have this when swiping up on lock screen kind of option but in the more settings and the security there is no app lock so you have to keep that in mind in this rom you still do not get an app lock which is a bummer in my opinion because all the other roms are coming with a app lock at least but it still does not offer an app lock but let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed and first let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed the screen of everybody is working fine let me just clear this out With the always on display turned on, looks like this. Let me show you the fingerprint scanner from the always on display. I tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it unlocks. So yeah, I am not using animation but you can definitely do that if you want. But overall the experience is very smooth and even the animations of locking and unlocking is working fine. And again it is a very smooth experience of unlocking. And here let me show you the face unlock. 
if I point the device towards my face and it unlocks. Let me show you one more time. Yeah, the face unlock is working perfectly fine. You should not worry about it. Let's talk about the stock camera. Well, you get this the aperture camera is present by default here and you can go into the settings and stuff from here. You can take a quick photo if you want. And in the video settings, you can switch the resolution and stuff from here. But I have used a Google camera over here that is working fine. Let me actually show you with this. This is the MGC kind of version. I'll link it below. This is not like properly stable, but it does have the 0.66, the 1X or the main sensor and the 2x telephoto lens is also working fine with this. So I've been using it, even the night side and stuff is there. And in terms of video, of course, we have the 4K 60fps option over here that should work. There is also this 8K option, but don't get me wrong, that is not gonna work. This is just a Gcam mod. As you can see, if I click on 8K, it just shows 8K UHD is not supported. So yeah, otherwise, this is a really good Gcam that I found. So night side and stuff is working fine. Let me show you, I have taken a couple of like pictures this one I love is like looking really good in the night side mode. But yeah, overall the colors are coming out to be really good in my opinion. So yeah, this is a great camera in my opinion right now. You can use it if you want. I'll link it below. Let's just take a quick selfie with this, but I'm not really sure if the portrait mode will work. So yeah, portrait mode is actually working fine. That's a really good thing to see. The background blur is good enough and the details are amazing with the Zcam. Talking about the basic things, yes, safety net passes right out of the box over here. So you should not worry about the banking apps on this ROM. And the DRM info stays as L1 here. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any issues. And in terms of Google Photos, yes, it does support Google Photos unlimited backup. So you should not worry about it. In the display settings, this is how it looks like. We have the brightness level on top. Adaptive or auto brightness is present. In the lock screen settings, we have this allow face unlock and stuff. And in terms of privacy settings, you do get these. And in the ambient display, we of course have this always on enabled, but you do have this pickup option. Let me actually show you if the pickup is actually working fine. If I just put the device on the desk and pick it up on my hand, as you can see, the screen turns on in the ambient display. We have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes and we have the screen saver, the display size and text, normal stuff. You can enable high contrast and stuff if you want. Now here we have the colors, you can set it to saturated and we have the double tap to wake, the pocket detection, double tap to sleep and even the wake up on plug. But let me tell you, there is no DC dimming option. There is no outdoor bright sun mode. There is no high refresh rate option. So all those things definitely make this ROM really, like I would say feature less, you can say, because you do get these features in other ROMs like the Evolution X ROM. You do get 90 Hertz refresh rate and stuff but here you won't get all of those. The display is running at only 60 Hertz over here. In terms of benchmarks, here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test. And if you're worried about the Twitter scrolling, yes, the scrolling on Twitter is working perfectly fine. But yes, if you're coming from 90 Hertz refresh rate, you can definitely notice the choppiness of the screen. If you ask me who is this ROM actually for? Well, if you don't want a lot of customizations or if you have changed your display and you cannot go above 60 Hertz, and you want a basic stock Android-ish ROM based on Android 13 to actually really drive with, this is a perfect option for you. And overall, I would say the experience is good. The battery life is good enough over here and the like daily driving performance should be good enough on this ROM. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video with your friends if you feel like. This is T2 from KDNDX signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.